In this PowerPoint, we'll review the major types of chemical bonds that can form between atoms and the different types of substances that are associated with each bond. There are two major types of chemical bonds that can form between atoms, ionic bonds and covalent bonds. In an ionic bond, electrons are transferred from one element to another. So one atom loses an electron and in that process becomes a positively charged cation. Another atom has to gain that electron, and since it's gained an extra electron now, is a negatively charged anion. That's exactly what we see happening between sodium and fluorine here. Sodium is in column one of the periodic table. It's a metal, and as we already know, metals, when they form ions, form cations. They lose electrons. And all the metals in column one lose one electron to form ions with a plus one charge. Fluorine is a nonmetal in column 17 of the periodic table. And when nonmetals form ions, they gain electrons to form negatively charged ones. And uh, all the nonmetals in column 17 of the periodic table gain one electron to form anions with a negative one charge. So after that electron is transferred, we've formed two ions, one with a positive charge, one with a negative charge. And it's actually the electrostatic attraction between these two opposite charges that is the true basis of an ionic bond. It's not just the transfer of electrons, but it's the formation of the ions and the attraction of the ions that forms the ionic compound. So in order for an ionic bond to form, you have to have a cation and you have to have an anion. You have to have a positively charged ion and a negatively charged one. Since the elements that form positively charged ions are metals and the elements that form negatively charged ions tend to be nonmetals, ionic compounds are usually characterized as being formed between metals and non-metals. In a covalent bond, atoms overlap their outer electron orbitals and share electrons to form a bond. This graphic shows two hydrogen atoms overlapping their electron orbitals and sharing their electrons to form a single covalent bond. So this type of sharing occurs between non-metallic elements. Both elements want to gain electrons, but there are no metals around to give them electrons. So all they can do, since neither will give up their electron, is share. So covalent bonds tend to form between non-metals. So ionic compounds contain ionic bonds. Molecular compounds contain covalent bonds. Because of the different ways that these electrons are arranged in ionic covalent bonds, ionic compounds and molecular compounds can have some very different properties. For example, ionic compounds, which are formed between metals and nonmetals, tend to form large crystal lattices, and they are all solids crystalline solids to be more specific. So this is a molecular representation of a crystal of table salt, which is sodium chloride, the ionic compound sodium chloride. So it's made up of sodium ions, which are positively charged, and negatively charged chloride ions. <laughs> and of course the formation of that compound is simply the electrostatic attraction between the positive and the negative charges. Now, when a positively charged sodium atom attracts a negatively charged chlorine, it doesn't attract just one negatively charged. It attracts all of the negative charged ions around it in its immediate vicinity, and they coalesce around that positively charged sodium. And at the same time, each of those negatively charged chloride ions will attract all of the positively charged sodiums in its immediate vicinity, and they coalesce around it and you end up with this large three-dimensional structure of positive and negatively charged ions. It's a very regular repeating pattern, which is the basis of a crystal. 
It's a very strong bond that forms in that electrostatic attraction um, between all of those different ions. And as a result, these crystalline solids, um, they stay as solids because it's such a strong bond holding all of those ions in place. In contrast, the covalent bonds found in molecular compounds form just between two atoms at a time. So a molecule can actually contain multiple covalent bonds. So you can have more than just two atoms within a molecule, but each bond within a molecule is found between two distinct atoms. And as a result, molecules are distinct, discrete particles. They contain only the atoms that are chemically covalently bonded together. Water, for example, is made up of individual particles that each contain only one atom of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen. The atoms of hydrogen are each covalently bonded to that oxygen, but they form a distinct complete unit in and of themselves. And a separate molecule of water forms for another pairing of oxygen and the two hydrogens. So these individual particles can be found in all phases, solids, liquids, and gases. It just depends upon how much energy those particles have and how close they are to each other. So for example, molecular water can be found in all three phases. Solid ice, liquid water, its most abundant form, or gaseous water vapor or steam. Covalent bonds form between nonmetal atoms, and those nonmetal atoms can be from different elements, as in molecular compounds like water, or they can actually be the same element, as in the molecule of nitrogen gas depicted here. There are seven important molecular elements that you need to know. These are the diatomic elements. And when they're found as pure elements in nature, they're always found as two atoms covalently bonded together. So if you're writing the formula for the element, you would always write it with a two subscript. There are a couple of tricks to remember these. One is the word Brinkelhoff. And that's just what the element symbols spell when you put them together. The other way to remember the diatomic elements is the rule of seven. Six of those elements form a seven on the periodic table, starting with element seven and the vertical portion in column 17. The seventh diatomic element is hydrogen. In summary, there are two major types of chemical bonds, ionic and covalent. Ionic bonds are found in ionic compounds, usually between a metal and a nonmetal, and ionic compounds form large crystal lattices. Covalent bonds form between nonmetals and are found in molecular compounds and molecular elements.